Good morning dear friends it is so nice to be with you for this a few minutes of a meditating god's word for our encouragement and our strength and our relationship with the lord that they may it may become very intimate and that's what the word of god does if you listen carefully and put the lesson into practice Our today's meditation is based on the book of Acts chapter 4 verses 13 to 22 and also 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 26 to 30 and uh, the title is the enemy's attack and opposition to the church and Christians response in Acts chapter 4 we have this uh, record of uh, Christians being uh, persecuted and opposed by the religious leaders and uh, Peter and John were arrested by the religious leaders to question them and uh, then persecute them the thing we notice is the the religious leaders contempt uh, towards the disciples they label them as unlearned and ignorant people and how could these ignorant men talk about matters relating to law and doctrines that was their their, their question and uh, they were men without college degrees and uh, professional qualification or uh, acknowledged and uh, accepted by the society these men were just ordinary people without any uh, tra- training in any college or in institutions and thus they refuse to listen and understand what these disciples had to share with the people but they It is true that they did not have any professional qualification they did not have any degrees they were not acknowledged and accepted by the society or people did not acclaim them as men of learning it is true but they have one thing they have Jesus Christ living in them and anyone who has Christ in them they possess a dignity that neither the academic qualifications on degrees nor the world of professional uh, professionals can give please read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 26 to 30 the reason i quoted that reference is to let you know and impress on you the fact that to whom god chooses and god himself qualifies them not with the degrees of this world and then begin to use them it is not by their own power or abilities but the spirit of god dwelling in them the members of sanhedrin were amazed <coughs> the, uh, the to see how these unlearned men were talking about doctrines and teaching of god and they could not answer them either the second thing i want you to notice is that uh, is the threat the disciples the disciples were facing that they knew the disciples knew that any threat even if carried out is temporary no threat no opposition and no uh, threatening will ever remain forever the disciples knew they come but they go as well but the things of god last forever and second corinthians chapter 4 verse 18 I would like you to take down these references and after this meditation hour please go and read them and then recapture uh, these lessons that I am speaking to you 
and you will find that living for this man called Jesus Christ who is not merely a man but is God who became a man in order to reveal God to us and then accomplish our plan, God's plan of our salvation our forgiveness of sin and the third thing to notice is um, notice the Christian's response to their threat and um, in the face of this attack Peter and John had certain defenses to their threat and I would like to mention four of these defenses that they used. Number one, an unanswerable fact. And what is that unanswerable fact? The crippled man in chapter 3 was healed. And he is standing right in front of them all, before all of them. And it is therefore an undeniable fact that in the name of Jesus Christ, that these unlearned men were able to perform this miracle. The greatest defense of a Christianity is the Christian man himself. See, this crippled man did not know Jesus. And now he came to know Jesus, he became a follower and worshipper of the Lord Jesus Christ as well. So here is a living witness standing before them, unanswerable. How come that this man is standing on his feet? strong and then following Jesus and so it was impossible to deny so the strongest defense of Christianity is a Christian himself who has been changed and transformed by acknowledging Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior here is a cripple who now standing prophesying Jesus Christ as his Lord. The second defense is an utter loyalty <clears throat> to God. These two disciples were faced with the question of obeying God or man. They had no question of what they should do. They knew it. They had to obey God and God alone. Hallelujah. And so they obeyed God. The problem with the many Christians today is that the voices of their neighbors, their friends, their colleagues, and their their peers, these voices sound louder in their ears than the voice of God. That is why many people, though convinced, they hesitate to come forward in response to the call of God to follow him that they may have eternal life. My friends, if anyone who is listening to me, if you have been giving your ears more to the world, to your friends and neighbors and family members and uh, colleagues, etc., you will never succeed in your life. It was said of uh, John Knox, a a saint who lived uh, 200 years ago, that he feared God so much that there was no fear of any man or anything on his face. And that is truly amazing. 
and the next defense that they had to this problem of persecution the defense of a personal experience of Christ we they said we cannot but speak the things we have seen and heard you see the the, the truth was these disciples who were with Jesus for three and a half years and they have already seen what Jesus could do and they have heard directly from Jesus the teaching about Christian faith how you can find eternal life by believing in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and thus be obedient to God. A man or a woman who is willing to obey God can never be a failure in life. Thank God for such faith. Someone who has tasted Christ and His love and His grace not only be loyal to Christ but he shall also bear witness for the Lord Jesus Christ and in closing observe the role of the Holy Spirit in all of these number one the Holy Spirit equipped the individual disciple or even today, he equips individual believers, followers of Jesus Christ for the witness. Acts chapter 4 verse 8. Please make sure that you read. And secondly, the Holy Spirit even today equip the entire church body to bear witness to the fact that there is no other name under heaven among men by which one can be saved and be forgiven of her sin and receive eternal life except the name of Jesus Christ the Son of God and anyone who listens to me if you do not know what I am talking about having a faith in Jesus Christ acknowledging him as Lord and Savior and inviting him to come into your heart and live in your heart as your king hand over to him your life and your future and your eternity will be secured in him this is a good news my friend the Savior of the world Jesus Christ he changes life he takes an ignorant unqualified person turn him around and the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in him who reveals to him things that others cannot understand or know. and such power will be revealed in him and through him he can as he go around bearing witness to the fact that there is no other name by which you can find eternal salvation except the name of Jesus here is your opportunity take your stand and find a new life in Jesus Amen God bless you Father in the name of Jesus I thank you for everyone who will listen this message this meditation that you not only draw them closer to you but encourage them strengthen them deepen their commitment to follow you and personally be intimately drawn to you in love and in following you thank you for giving them the strength in jesus name bless the lord oh my soul hallelujah god bless you my brother my sister Trust in God. Jesus loves you. Amen. This is a good day. Enjoy this day. Don't miss God's grace. Amen.